Big Gay Ice Cream started as an ice cream truck, uh, purely a, a whim. One summer I decided I was gonna do something strange with my time, and I started looking for a weird job, something really New York. And then one day I logged onto Facebook and my friend's status message said, if you wanna drive an ice cream truck, get in touch with me. And I said, that sounds really weird. The truck was a success, so we opened our first store in 2011, and we opened this store in 2012. This is the milkshake land. This is where Michael does stuff. Hi, I'm making an ice cream cone. Don't talk to Michael. When we started as a truck, I started a Facebook group right away to get my friends in on it. And I said to one of them, I don't think I really need a Twitter account, do I? I perceived Twitter at that time to be mostly people posting pictures of like uh, Britney Spears getting out of a limo with no underwear on, that kind of thing. But 2009 was the summer that Twitter really took off and food trucks started to enter the zeitgeist. And everything worked out. We have a cone named after B. Arthur. So this is B. Arthur's portrait during the day. And this is B. Arthur after dark. He ended the first summer with about a thousand followers and thinking, wow, this is really fantastic. And it's slowly steamrolled and now it's 53,000 or so. How we engage with people on Twitter and Facebook is definitely calculated. If I post on Twitter, I'm generally intending to be on my phone, receiving and responding right then. On Facebook, I take a bit of a different approach because our Facebook uh, page members tend to know a lot about the brand. So frequently the question's answered by another member of the page, which I think is kind of a great way to let people defend the brand. These three ice cream machines are actually named after people who um, boosted our business at the first store enough that we could afford them for this store. So that's Andrew Zimmern, that's Tony Bourdain, and the last one over there is Gail Simmons. We have customers come in all the time who say, I've been following you on Twitter forever, or I, you know me on Facebook as. And recently they've started coming in and saying, oh, maybe you see me click like on Instagram. So is there an obvious return on what effectively costs us nothing? Yeah, yeah, huge. I would like to note that we blend our own sprinkles because Brian and I both find white sprinkles on vanilla ice cream to be a horrible waste of real estate. I think the best advice for businesses that are trying to take things online and create a presence is first to watch instead of jumping in and look at pages that you like and make active observations about what's going on. Secondly, if you're not comfortable on one of these streams, don't sign up. I didn't go on Foursquare for three years because I couldn't make sense of it for me and how I wanted it to come across. So don't go places where you're not comfortable. This sort of translates into our customer base, you know. Our customer base, I think, is primarily people who come here looking for fun. And it's also people who come looking for a good product. So is our customer base particularly gay, particularly white, particularly black? No, it's not particularly anything. It's all over the map. Our customer base is New York City.